Now, I'm not the best D2 player at all, but I can easily clear the field of ads in PvE and whoop some ads in the PvPs. Yeah, I said it, the PvPs. <laughs> Today, I wanted to do something a little different and give you guys what I feel is the best controller settings, and this is regardless what platform you are on, in Destiny 2 for PvE and PvP. Now, these are the same settings that I use in both PvE and PvP, but will it make you a Destiny 2 god? Probably not. But once you get used to them, you should feel a little difference in your gameplay. Quick disclaimer, I do use several custom controllers with back paddles, but only two. My left paddle is map 2X and my right paddle is map 2R3, so I can actually jump and melee without having to move my thumbs off the thumbsticks. Kisses, don't kill me and don't shoot me. So for the controller movements, I leave this as default. There's really no need to actually change this. For the button layout, because I do use custom controllers, I do actually change my layout. And you guys can go ahead and copy this if you want. Go ahead and pause the video, that way you can keep track of every button that I actually use um, for whatever binding it actually is. It's kind of similar to Puppeteer um, in the sense of a couple of buttons moved. Next, for the look sensitivity, that is exactly what it is. The way you look, how fast you do it. Uh, when you get closer to 1, it's very slow. When you get closer to 20, it is very high. You don't want this too high because you want to be able to control um, the controller as best as possible when you're trying to look left and right as well as up and down. So I found that the sweet spot for this is 15 to 17. Anything higher than 17, then you're doing a little too much. When it comes to the ADS sensitivity modifier, same concept as look sensitivity except for when you're ADSing. I found that 1.0, 1.1, and then 1.2 are the best places um, to actually keep that. Anything higher than 1.2, if you get shot and you're trying to shoot back, it will uh, make you flinch and you will kind of will flinch a lot and you will most likely die. For the vertical inversion as well as the horizontal inversion, I keep both of these at default, which is not inverted. And well, you don't need to invert your like access. As for the auto look centering, what this actually does is it will auto look every single time you are doing something to go right back to the center. You do not want to do this in PVE or PVP, especially not PVP, uh, because it will mess up your gameplay um, when you are actually trying to play. So turn this off. Sprint turn scale, go ahead and put this all the way up to 0.8. This will help you turn a little bit better while you're sprinting. Controller vibration, I keep this off. Controller vibration is a huge, huge distraction when you're getting shot or when you're landing off of a high jump. It You don't need it on. Just turn it off. That way you don't have to worry about dealing with it. Next, the double press delay. I keep it at the lowest possible. That way there is the lowest delay. So I keep it at one. Let's go ahead and go over the video. Screen, uh, screen bounce. You want to go ahead and keep this in bounds of your monitor. HDR, I keep this on on because I want to see the better colors on my monitor. Um, you can keep this off if you want. You may gain a little bit more performance if you turn this off. When it comes to the brightness, I have my midpoint set at 50 and my peak brightness nits set at 1350. And this will vary depending on your TV or monitor. The default for this is 50 and 1000. But as you can see, I lost a lot of color in the uh, brightness for the nits as well when I turned it down. But for my specific monitor, I keep this at 1350. Anything higher, I really can't tell the difference. For 120 hertz mode and the crucible, I turn this on because my monitor does support 144 hertz. Um, and this does give you um, better performance inside PvP. Uh, if you do not know if your monitor support, uh, supports 120 hertz, then I would probably go ahead and check uh, the manual. For the field of view, I keep this at the highest, which is 105. And what this does is it gives you a wider um, field of view um, in PvE as well as PvP. Um, that way you can see more of what's around you instead of having to turn your head too much. So definitely keep this at 105. 
from motion blur you really don't need this on it's distracting turn it off chromatic aberration same thing turn it off and fill grain i don't know why they put film grain in um video games but this is something that they integrated in movies turn it off you don't need it for sound for the sound effects volume, I keep that at five because I still like to hear when I'm actually shooting, even though I cannot feel the vibration. For the dialogue and cinematics volume, I keep this at eight because I do want to hear what the NPCs are saying in the story. Music volume, I keep that at four. While I do want to hear the music, I don't want it to be too distracting or overpowering when it comes to the dialogues. And then for the chat volume, I keep that at seven. This is basically your game chat not your party chat. For gameplay, we're gonna go straight down here to the HUD opacity. I keep this on low because I do not want too many things on my screen to be a distraction. Subtitles, you can keep this on whatever you want. I keep everything on default. Colorblind mode, I keep this off, but I am playing around with uh, Protonopia. And what this does is it changes the colors um, of the game. And most importantly, it will change your uh, radar to show up as yellow instead of red. And that actually looks a lot better in my own opinion than the red one does in darker areas. Than the red one does in darker areas. Full auto, I keep it on on. As for the reticle color, I like to use a neutral color. So I use white. Any of the other colors look more like it will be a distraction while I'm trying to aim. So I want to use a color that's not going to be a distraction. Um, so white is perfect for me. Helmets always on. Display hints. I have this turned off. The majority of the hints in Destiny 2 are literally the same as the previous hints. So I just keep these off. And then for crossplay, I actually turn crossplay matchmaking on because I do not mind playing with other uh, platforms. You, on the other hand, may not want to play with PC players or Xbox players or vice versa, so you can turn this off if you want. For social, roster preferences, clearly whatever you want. Voice chat, like I said, I do keep it on just in case I need to um, actually talk to people that aren't in my party um, while I'm actually playing. As for text chat, I keep that off, so you do not have to worry about any of this. Text chat, what that does is it pops up a little, uh, I'm sorry, a little box where people can actually text chat to you, but the auto hide feature takes way too long to actually like get rid of that. And it's very distracting. So I turn it off that way. I don't have to ever worry about seeing it. So this is what I feel is the best controller settings for destiny Two currently as of Lightfall. Now, let me know whether you guys actually agree or disagree with these settings, or if you have other settings that you actually have changed on your own um, platform or uh, for your controller um, that you feel is better or what you feel is good. And that, my friends, brings us to the end. If you're new here, feel free to subscribe to my channel, like and share the video if you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Hey. Hey you, watch these videos too. I know you like them. Go, 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 go.